Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's video, we're comparing a Ram 1500 Limited to a Chevy Silverado High Country, and then also to a Ford F-150 Platinum, and we're gonna figure out who makes the best luxury truck out of the big three. Now, before we get in this video, I do wanna mention that if you wanna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into the video. Starting under the hood of the Silverado, we have the most efficient powertrain you can get with it, which is the Duramax diesel. It's a three liter inline six goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's good for 277 horsepower and then 460 pound feet of torque. You're going to be able to get well over 20 miles per gallon with this powertrain. Again, it is a diesel. And then popping over to the Ford, we have the Power Boost, which is a twin turbo 3.5 liter gas V6 that's paired to a hybrid system, goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It's good for about 430 horsepower and then 570 pound feet of torque. Average fuel economy is like low 20s uh, with this powertrain. Um, this one is technically the, well, least fuel efficient, but it's still super fuel efficient for a truck. And then popping over to the Ram, we've got the Eco Diesel. It's a three liter V6. Diesel goes through an eight-speed automatic transmission. It's good for 260 horsepower and then 480 pound-feet of torque. Fuel economy is pretty similar to what you get with the Duramax in the Chevy. So yeah, we got all, we got efficiency across the board with these luxury trucks. Now you guys can see here with the front end of the Silverado, you got the Duramax there on the hood. And then you got the High Country logo there off to the side. Uh, now this particular one has this really cool white paint color. You can see with the metallic flake in it. And then popping down below, you can see there with the daytime running light and then the headlight as well. Notice the blacked out trim there off to the side. And then you can see here with the parking sensors on the front bumper. And then notice you got that special coloration there as part of the High Country package in the grill. And also, of course, High Country logo. Got the Chevy bow tie, which is normal with the High Country. Uh, fog lights there at the bottom, which is kind of interesting that Chevy decided to do that with the new Silverado tow hooks as well. And yeah. There is the front end of the truck. Now popping over to the Ford, this one's white as well. <laughs> you guys can see Ford's HUD design, which I think is pretty cool, actually. And other than that, popping down below, you can see here with the daytime running lights and notice with the headlights and Ford's headlights are so bright now, it's crazy. And then it's kind of weird. They have like that random like gloss chrome strip and then they got like the more satiny finish, right? More of the brushed appearance around it. It's just kind of engine, but the grill I think looks pretty good altogether. It definitely does give this a more distinctive uh, appearance uh, compared to other Fords in the lineup. But you can see again, fog lights are at the bottom, parking sensors, tow hooks. All these trucks are gonna be pretty similar from an exterior equipment perspective. And then popping over the Ram, this one's red. So it's the odd one out of the bunch. I would have picked a white limited, but I don't think I've reviewed one for 22 sadly. So maybe I'll have to go review one and then remake this video so they're all white trucks. Or maybe I go review a red Ford and Chevy. Anyways, we've got distinctive headlights that are, well, they're not special just for the limited. You can also get them in a Longhorn or a TRX, but they're different substantially with the styling. You got the custom grill for the limited, fog lights down below, parking sensors, tow hooks, all the normal works there at the bottom of the truck, body painted bumper. Uh, but I want you guys to let me know which front end do you like the most out of the bunch. Now popping into the side of the Silverado, you guys can see the wheel design. Um, again, they've got like the chrome on part of it and then it's like silver, so it's like a mix between uh, both of the different uh, colors, which hey, creates a little bit of contrast and obviously massive wheels, that's just, a luxury truck thing to do. Independent front suspension with the new Silverado. You've got your high country logo there, and then you guys can see the power side steps, and then notice that chrome accent piece on the side. And then you can see there with the mirror caps, door handles as well. And then popping back to a full side view, you guys can see there, pretty solid. I, I like the side styling of the new Silverado. And then here's a quick look at the leaf springs. Uh, payload capacity on this is actually super solid. Um, it's really high. We'll talk about that in a moment. We've got the wheels over here on the Ford. Now I'm going to just say it. I, I love, I love some of Ford's wheel designs. I think these look pretty good, but I think they might be the blandest out of this bunch in particular, uh, independent front suspension on the Ford. And then you guys can see there with the fender, how that's shaped. You got your F-150 logo there, power boost down below, and then the chrome mirrors. I do like the finishes on the door handles on this though. I think they look really good, and the mirror too. I think that looks good. Just the wheels, I don't know. I, I, I don't know, not my favorite. 
Uh, but we've got leaf springs here in the back of the Ford as well. Then you guys can see there with the rear shock. And then EcoBoost always has the exhaust poking out the side. Now, here is the Ram. Um, so these are the base wheels you can get with the Limited. You can get cooler wheels uh, with the truck if you want. Um, but I think as a base wheel, these actually look really good with the shape. Now, with the Ram, you got independent front suspension, but you have air suspension too. Got the Ram logo with the Limited logo and the thing that goes down the side. And then you guys can see here with the trailer tow mirrors. And then notice with the chrome there on the door handles. And I, I think this truck looks great from a side perspective with the fender flares, all that. Uh, I, I think that all of it together definitely just gives the truck distinctive look. Now at the back of the Ram, we've got, again, air suspension in the back. Um, but if you don't get a limited, you can get coil suspension with the Ram. So it's either air suspension with the Ram or coil suspension. No leaf springs like the Ford and the Silverado. Uh, here's a key fob for the Silverado. As you can see, you've got the tailgate lowering function, which is pretty cool. And notice we've got uh, protection from the factory, so you don't have to worry about scraping paint or anything like that. It's big, I think, because, you know, most people use their truck beds. Got the outlet there on the bed as well. Notice we have our High Country logo. And then you can see there with the cargo light and the camera at the top. And then since this one doesn't have the multi-pro, the tailgate does automatically raise as well, which is pretty cool. Uh, they just need to figure out how to make it automatically raise with the multi-pro. I know that's a silly thing, but, you know, just to stay competitive with the other manufacturers. Again, more uh, logos, but you can see with the bumpers there at the bottom, they're body painted and the exhaust tips. One thing I will say is the High Country, I mean, it's got some distinctive exterior touches, but it doesn't look too much different than other Silverados. They they didn't do a lot um, to like really, really differentiate it. And I know this function out in the key fob of the Ford's identical. All the functions, like I said, it's almost like these trucks are comparable. And now you guys can see here with the measuring tables on the bed of the Ford, and then you got the LED lights. And then notice with all of the outlets there in the bed as well. And then you can see there with the cargo light at the top. And then notice no bed liner. Uh, it's an option. You can get it's like almost 600 bucks with the Ford. So it's not cheap. But they've figured out how to make it so that the tailgate can automatically raise up even with its bed step function built in. It's pretty heavy. And then finishing with the rest of it. Notice we got our platinum logo there on the back with the lights. And then body paint and bumpers. And, you know, again, there's, I feel like there's a little bit more on the Ford to differentiate this from other Ford models. Now, key fob with the Ram, it has one extra function. That's the lowering with the air suspension since it does have air suspension. I'm sure another truck maker's got to add air suspension in the future. Like real truck maker, not, not like fake truck makers like Rivian. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just calling people out for no reason. Um, but, you know, like full-size truck with air suspension. Anyways, you got the cargo light there at the top. And then uh, don't have a raise with the tailgate. You have to lift up yourself. There's no way to get that option with the Ram. And, you know, I will say in the back end of the Ram, it, you know, other than the limited badge, it looks just like other Rams. But, you know, the body paint and bumpers help out with making it look a little bit nicer, all that, just like the other trucks. And, yeah, I think the Ram looks great from a rear end perspective. Let me know which one you guys like overall exterior-wise uh, with the three trucks. Now... Popping back to the high country, we've got the blue interior. It seems like it's been pretty controversial. Some people love it, like me. Uh, other people don't, because they just want, you know, normal black interior, basically. But you can see there with the wood trim, and then notice that you've got, like, the little perforations. The other thing that's kind of interesting about the Silverado is, like, that double stack design with the armrest. You guys can see the brown stitching all throughout. And then I like the look of the speakers for the new Bose sound system. Anyways, uh, seats again, blue, of course. You've got like some brown behind the blue, which I think, I don't know, I, I think that just is a cool combination. I think it actually looks pretty good overall. And uh, something to mention though with the seats, uh, with the Silverados, they are, are a little bit on the harder side of things. Now popping over to the Platinum, uh, notice with the finish in the leather and the Alcantara, which I think looks great. Again, we've got the brown piping and stitching. It's kind of like a luxury truck thing to add some brown. A little wood trim insert. Uh, speaker for the Bang & Olsen sounds as it looks cool. Now the seats in the Platinum are uh, by far my favorite out of the bunch uh, from like a comfort perspective. Um, got like the heated seats there in the back. You got all the outlets. But yeah, it just seems like they're just softer uh, with the Ford. So whatever they do with the padding or whatever, they, they do a good job with that in the Ford. And then popping over to the Ram. Uh, this is probably my 
favorite door panel from like a material perspective because there's so much leather and then you can see the power side step there and then uh, same thing with the seats i think they look really cool from a design perspective i wish ram would add some color to them though uh, you know obviously they have different packages like long corn and all that uh, and you can get you know more colored seats with the limited but i don't know maybe a little bit of extra color just to the black seats only truck that has ventilated seats in the rear with this comparison by the way so take that for what it is and then popping back over to the silverado again uh, you guys can see there with the door panel i noticed with the wood trim then again perforated all of the uh, memory seat functions there and then you got your high country logo so every time you open up your door you remember what uh, truck you purchased front two windows are automatic and again i love that design there with the speaker for the bose sound system and then notice again with the brown stitching all throughout which looks great got again another high country logo and then there in the headrest and then you guys can see there with the seat center where it's all perforated power adjustments on the side and then you can see the pedal layout there at the very bottom and then also got your drive mode selects you got drive line select light controls heads up display controls steering wheel adjustment which is power and then popping back over to the ford Notice that design continues here to the front door panel with the Alcantara and the leather and the brown piping and again the wood trim. Blind spot monitoring for the mirrors, oh, that's kind of just a thing with this truck segment, right? You can have more safety tech. Get another speaker for the Bang & Olsen sound system. It's also in the headrest as well. And then you've got the cushy front seats. I mean, just look, they, like the seats look more comfortable. They are more comfortable. They, they like also like just look more comfortable. And then it notice the pedal layout, got the platinum logo there pedal adjustment, parking brake light controls, mirror lights, and then tailgate drop down with the steering wheel adjustment that is power, more wood trim. And going from that over to the limited, you guys can see here with the door panel again, notice with all of the leather trim, and you can see there another speaker for the Harman Kardon sound system. And then the mirrors do power fold in, you got automatic window controls. This one has a trailer tow mirror, so they flip up too. They have blind spot wearing just like the other trucks, memory seats, all the works. Uh, and then here are the front seats. So again, I, I, I love the design on the Ram seats. I think they're great. Uh, and you know, the seats do wear in to be softer over time because they're real leather. And then notice the pedal adjustment, and then you guys can see the light controls as well. And then notice the leather there on the dash. It does have a manual adjustment for the steering wheel though. And then this is something cool about the Silverado is you've got this like nice neat animation every single time you get into the truck. Which, you know, kind of, it's not necessary, but it just adds to the experience that you get a custom animation now that we have digital infotainment systems and gauge clusters and all that kind of stuff now in vehicles, right? So many screens, so got to have cool stuff on the screens, right? But anyways, here is the steering wheel. Um, so basically you get the same steering wheel in this truck, whether you get like a, an RST or, you know, something like a high country. Do you have the paddle shifters on the back, which are cool, but... Again, they're plastic. I wish they would have just done a little bit more from a material perspective with the steering wheel on the silver, on the high country at least, right? And then here's the gauge cluster. Great, uh, full digital gauge cluster. Resolution's fantastic. And they did a really solid job with this. Uh, but the one thing to mention is you don't have to get a high country to get this gauge cluster. Uh, I've seen it in LTs and in RSTs as well, which are kind of like the middle of the line truck, right? So yeah. But notice the different drive modes. You get normal, sport, and then off-road mode, and then obviously the tow haul mode as well. So there's a lot of customization from a driving perspective. And then we do have a heads-up display. So we have quite a bit of cool tech. Now here's the new infotainment system. Uh, and camera system, uh, you guys know I've said this in several reviews, is amazing on the Silverado. I think it's the best camera system right now in the truck segment because resolution's great, screen's big, and you have so many camera views like everything so whether you're hooking up to a trailer or you're taking a truck off road you're going to be able to see exactly what's happening and so i think that chevy did a really good job with that and then as for the rest of the infotainment system it's horizontal which i really like you got the shortcut bar and then you have like the main screen response time's great you have apple carplay android auto with the truck as well and then you have the auxiliary screen which um, it's cool they have it. I feel like they just did that though to like make the screen bigger. But 
yeah, it's 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 a solid system overall. And then notice we got our controls for some of the safety tech here, and then the auto stop start if you want to turn that off. And then you guys can see with the hazard lights, you can roll down all the windows at once, which is such a weird feature. People love it, but it's it's a weird feature that is for sure. Trailer brake control as well, and then you know heated cold seats, heated steering wheel uh, here because it's the high country, dual zone climate. No massaging seats though. I, I did not. Uh, I, I checked the infotainment system. I, I didn't see any. Check the side of the seat. I didn't see any controls for that. Cup holders, got the shifter for the 10-speed automatic transmission, which I, I love the new shifter. I think they did a really good job on that as well. You can see the wood trim with the silver trim there on the side. And then notice with the center console, you got the phone holder there at the top of it. Really nice uh, from a design perspective, I think. And then you got your wireless phone charger in there with the center console set up. Uh, least amount of storage space out of the bunch though with the center console. And then notice the dual glove box situation with the wood trim there on the front. And then nice material use on the dash, like pretty much uh, all of the dash is covered, which is a huge improvement compared to, well, other than the heads up display area, but you can't cover that. Um, but yeah, huge, huge improvement compared to, you know, the previous version of the high country. So I think that we got to give credit where credit is due. Got the camera mirror, which is a huge bit of safety tech, just regular center, not panoramic. And then control for the power setting rear window as well. Darker colored headliner. Uh, pretty normal setup, nothing crazy happening with that. Um, but anyways, popping over to the Ford. We have our built Ford Tough animation, right? Every single time the truck starts up. Um, but the steering wheel, you know, it's reg relatively regular F-150, but they do have some nicer materials and the Ford logo looks nicer. Uh, and the buttons, frankly, just, they, it looks a little bit, you know, more upscale. Um, but functionality is the same, right? So it's not like, it just looks nicer, but it's kind of, that's what you pay for in a luxury truck, I think. And the gauge cluster, I think, again, just as solid as what the Silverado has, fully digital, uh, just as easy to use. Uh, I want you guys to let me know which one you like the look of more. I like them both. I think that they, uh, both automakers did a great job with the screen itself. Then the other thing uh, with the uh, screen for the Ford is the fact that it'll like, you know, in certain things it'll like shrink and increase depending on what you're showing on the screen. Tons of different drive modes. Uh, this has like the most out of the bunch from a drive mode perspective. Um, but you know, my experience owning, well, I know it's not like this, but it's, a, it's still an F-150 of the Raptors, basically normal mode most of the time, sport mode occasionally. And then obviously I use some of the off-road modes cause it's the Raptor, but then yeah, you're not going to use all of them is what I'm trying to say. There's, there's a lot of them. It's cool, but probably not gonna use all of them. And then a bunch of controls here at the top. Main things, right, for the camera, parking assistance, stability control, all that. And then camera system on the Ford. I think it's great. Um, notice that the view isn't as big as what you have with the Silverado with certain camera viewpoints. Others, it's bigger because it's like the whole screen, literally, which I think is great. Um, but there isn't as many viewpoints with the camera system itself. So I'm gonna give this camera system a strong second place. Strong second place. Pro power on board, because again, this is the hybrid, right? And then you guys can see here with the screen, similar to the Silverado, where you've got like the main screen and then you have the auxiliary screen there on the side, but the shortcut bars at the bottom instead of on the side. So that's a little bit different from a infotainment system design perspective, as you guys can see. Um, but notice all the stuff you can see with the hybrid system, which is pretty cool to see that happening in real time. Got the trailer backup system, trailer brake controls, the drive mode select, with the drive line select. I do have a rear locker. Um, if you guys are wondering with the Chevys, they don't have a rear locker unless it's a ZR2. Um, it just has the G80 if, it's, if it has that system, which is an automatic system. And then heated cold seats, heated steering wheel, wireless phone charger, all that normal luxury truck stuff, dual zone climate, everything you come to expect. And it's interesting with the wood trim, yeah, kind of like how they have it in the truck. Shifter in the center console, right? And then I love the face of this center console. Uh, now this one's the second biggest. So the Silverado is the smallest. This one's right in the middle. And then you can see from the glove box perspective, pretty normal setup, dual glove box. Again, it's kind of expected in this segment of truck. Uh, and then this has the least amount of uh, nice material use on the dash. They've got a lot more, you know, just exposed plastic. Panoramic center, though, which is cool. Popping over to the Ram Limited. Now, this one's uh, the most interesting. So, steering wheel is definitely the most custom because you have that big wood insert there at the top. 
and then more wood trim down below and the ram logo is a little bit different and i, I think this steering wheel out of the bunch looks i love ford steering wheel but i think this looks the nicest from this luxury truck perspective and again functionality pretty similar with a lot of the controls there on the face of the steering wheel now this one has the most old school type gauge cluster because we've got analog gauges on either side and the screen there in the center but it kind of gives it this cool kind of you know i wouldn't say old but you know i don't know just it, it gives it a nice appearance and then notice with the material use on the dash, this has the nicest materials and the most of them. And then you can see here at the infotainment system. From a camera system perspective, I mean, resolution's great. Viewpoints are great. It just doesn't have as many viewpoints as the, uh, other, the other trucks. And the view itself is smaller because it's on a vertical screen versus horizontal, right? And, you know, it looks cool in the dash, but yeah, I, I wish they would have gone for horizontal design. I think it's the route to go, personally. Um, but notice with the rest of the screen, you got the shortcut bar at the bottom, just like the Ford. You can do split screen functions, just like what the other two have. Uh, Ram kind of invented the giant truck infotainment system, right? Heated cooled seats, heated steering wheel. Uh, no massaging seats in this one. And then you guys can see the controls there on either side for the climate system. So you've got analog controls as well as infotainment system controls, right? So they double down on some of the stuff. Notice this is like our towing slash air, slash air suspension area. And then you can see with the dial shifter, this does free up space. And notice we got our two wheel drive, four wheel auto, four wheel high, four wheel low. So they all have like pretty much a similar drive line system. And then you got your limited logo there on the center console. And you can see the measuring charts there on the back. It does slide backwards and forwards, which is really cool. Got nice wood trim on it. Power outlet down below with a wireless phone charger. And then we've got our dual glove box situation. Uh, but yeah, this has the biggest center console. Glove box area is the same as the other two. But yeah, look at the dash. I think this one has the nicest looking like front dash area from a material perspective. It definitely feels more like a luxury vehicle than the other two with the dash and the door panels. Uh, you can get a panoramic center for the Ram. This one just doesn't have it. Um, now, from a price point perspective, they're all pretty close. Uh, so the Ford and the Chevy in this video are uh, low 70s. And then that Ram is was like 73, 74,000. Just so it's, it was a little bit more expensive. But I, I feel like I picked three trucks that are pretty comparable from an option perspective. Like they all were pretty much as loaded as each other. So uh, here's what I have to say. So first off, we got to talk quickly about some driving stuff. Uh, so from a ride quality perspective, the Ram's definitely the smoothest. See, the Ford and the Chevy are pretty close. The Ford might be a little bit uh, smoother with the platform that they're using for the new F-150. But they're, they're all real. like, the thing you need to understand is they're all really close. Like, this is being super, super, super nitpicky. And then exterior-wise, I think the Ram is the most differentiated out of the bunch. Um, but I think they're all great-looking trucks. And then from a capability perspective, uh, the Ram actually has the lowest uh, payload capacity. Uh, the Silverado and the Ford are higher up there. Uh, the Power Boost does decrease the Ford's payload capacity by a slight amount because of that hybrid system, right? It weighs something. It's got to weigh something. Uh, and then from an interior perspective, I think the Ford has the nicest seats from a comfort perspective. Um, and then the Silverado, I like that interior the most from a color perspective. I think it looks really cool. And then the Ram has the most like luxury appearance looking interior because they use the most leather out of the truck makers and the whole dash is covered and they got tons of nice wood trim and it, again it just has this uniqueness factor compared to other vehicles within its own lineup and so yeah it's kind of an interesting um and you know interesting comparison right we've got all of the most efficient engines in them the diesels with the ram and the chevy and then the power boost with the ford and the thing about having powertrains like that in these vehicles is you know obviously you'll be able to travel farther on a tank of, of fuel but then on top of that right those engines are going to be quieter right because with the power boost you're going to have the engine shut off sometimes so that's going to be more quiet than the diesels right at lower rpm so that's going to be quieter uh, but yeah, I want you guys to let me know which of these luxury trucks uh, you would pick out of the bunch. And there you go.